Senator Kowal, it's a pleasure to welcome you. Thank you very much. Pleasure being here. Uh, it's uh, even more important because you are the Senate floor majority leader of the you know the state of Michigan. Correct. Uh, you have a lot of influence and sway in how policies are written and adopted. A little bit. <laughs> um, at a technology and innovation conference like this, uh, and the panel that you were on, uh, policy uh, most of the time becomes a gridlock for innovation. But the state of Michigan uh, looks at it very differently, are very proactive, very engaging, and you are an integral part of that. So I wanted to start with that question and, uh, and ask you, how do you look at this policy? Well, you're absolutely right. Uh, red tape is a terrible thing for uh, technology to get tangled up into. And it's, uh, it's always been my field of expertise to untangle the red tape to make things move more uh, fluidly as development uh, comes up. But we don't want to have government get in the way of uh, technology, but yet we just want to have a little bit of uh, uh, control in that it doesn't get too far out where we can't you know, have safety, health uh, situations dealt with at the time. So we're, uh, we're getting government out of the way, especially on the autonomous vehicle platform. We're working with all the, uh, all the manufacturers, uh, as well as uh, Google and Lyft and all the other companies that are involved in this, to make sure that, uh, that they're able to do what they have to do to make it, number one, safe for the general public to create jobs, better way of life here in Michigan. But most importantly is to keep the research and development here in the state of Michigan. We see that other countries, no matter where I travel, have said to me, we want to be like Detroit. We want to be like what you're doing in Detroit. Because they don't look at uh, uh, Detroit as being different than the entire state of Michigan. So what they're telling us is that we want to create an environment in our own world that's just like what you're doing in, in the state of Michigan. So when it comes to car industry, obviously this is the capital of the world. All the major three players are here. Uh, when we talk about technology, technology, uh, uh, the rapid pace with which it is evolving, even it's getting, I think, a bit difficult for even big companies like all these three. When you deal with this company and they come to you for help in legislation, how do you see them in terms of adopting the new technologies? Well, they're they're evolving in such a way that they know that the millennials that are coming up behind us that are not they're they're not so engaged in buying cars or owning cars. They just want to move from point A to point B right. as easily as possible. Mass transit to them is not really an option either because they're gonna you you have to walk from your house in the rain or the snow to a bus stop or a train stop and wait. Whereas you could call up a uh, an Uber type situation where they'll come and pick you up and move you. So what we're seeing is the car companies becoming more engaged in wanting to own the vehicles that are going to move people around. That's why you saw General Motors buy a significant uh, component of Lyft and they're now working out at the GM Proving Grounds in Milford and at the, uh, the Tech Center in Warren to help perfect these things. The uh, next question is on the next generation of workforce. It is going to be very different than you know, what we have seen in the past. Uh, Absolutely. What resources uh, you know, is government taking interest in to prepare for the next generation of workforce? Well, we're, we're entering into a new industrial revolution. There's just, there's no doubt about it. As different as it, as it was for our grandparents and parents, it's going to be different again for us with our, with our children as they, as they enter into the workforce and our grandchildren. It's our responsibility as state government to make sure that these kids are, uh, that they have all the education that they need to survive in that environment but not just survive, but to thrive and to develop and to be creative in their thinking and, and their developing and moving into their entrepreneurship uh, in the future. Okay. Uh, finally then, uh, there are two sides to every house and every Senate floor. 
and how difficult or how easy does it get when technology is, you know, is what you're working on? Well, interestingly enough, um, the bills that we're moving through the Senate right now, that have moved through the Senate, I should say, <clears throat> was a total bipartisan package. Senator Rebecca Warren, who is on the Democratic side, uh, took the bills that are pertaining to the Center for Mobility at Willow Run. I felt that because it was in her district that she should she should be able to be the sponsor of those bills. Uh, we, we drafted them and uh, she was more than happy to, to move the bills forward. So the bill passed out of the, uh, uh, the Senate committee unanimous. It passed off the Senate floor unanimous. And you have to remember that these are all A-type personalities. There's not, a, there's not a wallflower in the group. They're very opinionated, to say the least. We then moved it over to the uh, House of Representatives and moved out of that committee. Unanimous, one person abstained. And it was strictly because he was afraid of the technology. So we're, we're getting ready to have it on the full, ho or the full House floor. And we're anticipating that uh, to move out within the first few weeks of session when we come back and on the governor's desk and sign before the first of the year. All right. Well, thank you. Again, it's a pleasure, and thank you for the time for the panel. You're more than welcome. We're happy to do it. All right. Thank you. Right. Thank you.